If you can get a small printing press like this one, such a game changer if you're gonna do any type of intaglio, relief printmaking, monotypes. I worked on professional printmaking presses when I was an art school student. We had gigantic presses. Really, even if you could afford a gigantic press like that for your home studio, I wouldn't recommend it. Those large scale printmaking presses, they weigh so much that you would have to evaluate whether your home could even accommodate that weight. They take up an absurd amount of space. If you need to work on a gigantic press like that, just join a local print shop. I bought this exact printmaking press. It's a Blick 906 etching press. When I just got into art school in 1998 and I used this press at home for 20 years until a student bumped the press off the table and it came crashing down and, oh my gosh, I feel like a piece of myself died that day. The lesson I learned from that student breaking my press was you always need to have a silicone mat like this. This holds down the press. If it's on a table like this, it keeps it from moving. This press does have these little holes at the bottom. The most ideal setup for this press is building a really sturdy wooden cart. That way you can screw your press into the cart and that's the best. This table actually is not good. I don't recommend a flimsy plastic table like this. You really want a table that has serious weight. If you buy the specific press, you'll have the option of buying a press bed that's either steel or phenolic. The press bed that I picked is this phenolic press bed. A steel press bed is overkill. You really don't need something like that. It's so much heavier than the phenolic one as well. To use the press, you're gonna need three press blankets. Honestly, I can never remember which one is which. I just remember where the thick one and the thin one goes. This top blanket is quite thick and sturdy. The one in the middle is even thicker. The thing to know about this last blanket, which is quite thin, is that it's the only one that makes physical contact with your newsprint and therefore your print. If you print wet, it means that your printmaking paper, it's gonna get a little bit damp and that's gonna transfer over to the newsprint, which means that this blanket will get a little bit damp as you're printing. Keep in mind that it's okay if, because it's getting a little damp, that it shrinks a little bit. I had one that shrunk to this funky shape and I was really worried that I'd destroy it. It's fine. You gotta take care of your press blankets. Really try to avoid ink, fingerprints on it. And when you're done printing, never store the press blankets in the press like this. When I'm done printing, I pull this roller up, I take out the press blankets, and I just store them like this. I learned this lesson because one time I didn't take the press bed and blankets out of the press and I ended up with this big impression of the roller. And that's really bad because if your press blankets are permanently damaged like that, you really have to get new ones. Because if you have a big impression in the middle, that means that when you roll it to so the press, it's not gonna roll evenly. Before you even put the press bed and the blankets into the press, you really gotta make sure that all your blankets are lined up and that it's even on the press bed. If I have my blankets and the corners are not lined up, that's not good because then you're not getting even coverage. If your press blankets aren't centered onto the press bed, that can also be not so great because you want everything as lined up as possible. Inevitably, the press blankets are gonna move the more you print, they will get off center, in which case you have to remove the press bed, recenter the blankets to make sure everything is even. That's not a problem with you. That's just what happens when you print on a printing press that's this small. Bigger printmaking presses, I don't feel like that's as big of an issue. The trickiest part of this home press is you have to set the press pressure. In this case, there are these two spots. So these are the two places where you're going to turn to increase or decrease the pressure. I think it's helpful to always do it together. For example, I wouldn't use this one and just turn it all the way down, but leave this one up. You just wanna keep the roller fairly even. I just don't like to mess with that. So usually what I'll do is I'll take the two sides 
and I'll just put them down together until I start to feel some resistance from the press blanket. Okay, so that's fairly tight. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna look at the numbers that are on the side of the press. Right now, this side is at number eight. So what I'm gonna do is go over to the other side and I'm gonna to check to make sure the other side is also at number eight. Looks like this one's not quite high enough, so I'm gonna increase the pressure on this side. Every press is different. I know in print shops that I've worked in, sometimes you actually figure out the pressure by looking at the number of threads and you count the number of threads. Now I'm gonna test the press pressure with an actual plate. This is sort of handy. You can put your stuff up like this and then these two sections hold it into place. It's kind of awesome. This is the registration sheet. I'm going to put it underneath the acetate. And I'm going to put just a sample copper plate. Stick that on top of the registration sheet. I'm gonna put two layers of newsprint on top to simulate what that would be like if I actually were printing something. This really is, you just have to do it a million times to figure out. It's how it feels, which I know is the most vague direction I could possibly give you. But basically what you do is you roll the press through, and you see what the resistance is. I can already feel that it's not tight enough. Actually, one thing that works really well is if you make it too tight to the point where if you try to roll it through, you can't, that's actually a good gauge of how much is too much. And then you can say, okay, that was too much. I'm gonna loosen it a little bit, try it again. Okay, that was still not enough. I'm gonna try it again. Because most of the time, I think the issue when people have a home press like this is that they have trouble setting the pressure, and most of the time, it's harder to just increase, increase little bit by bit. It's a lot easier to make the pressure too much, and then you incrementally cut back. Then when the press pressure feels all right to you, you wanna make a note of the numbers. So I can say to myself, okay, anytime I wanna print a copper plate for intaglio, that is the setting for the press bed. It would be different if I was doing a wood block. You gotta keep an eye on the blankets because if the blankets start moving and all of a sudden they're not aligned, you're gonna wanna fix that. So you just loosen the press, take out the press bed, line them up again, put them back. That's pretty easy. You wanna keep an eye on the press bed though because there are these metallic rollers that are on the press and sometimes with this particular press, I've noticed that the press bed will actually go over these circular metal pieces and you don't want that. You want the press bed edge right up against this round metallic piece. Don't tell yourself, okay, I've got it all set up. I don't need to touch anything. No, you do. You need to keep an eye on these things. Really, I think that's just a function of this being a small dinky press. I mean, it's relative. I'm sorry, Benedict. <laughs> I really do like you. You're a very good press. It depends on the press, but you will find sometimes with certain plates, once you feel the plate has gone through the press, it might lurch a little bit. If it does that, don't freak, it's fine. This one's not doing it. I don't know why it could just be the press, but if you feel that lurch, no problem. You're gonna to wanna to use a registration sheet to make sure that your plate and paper are lined up. I always have a sheet of acetate that I tape to the press bed with blue painter's tape. Don't use something like masking tape. That can leave a lot of residue. The blue painter's tape doesn't do that. It's a lot better. Then you take your registration sheet and you slide it underneath the acetate. This works so well because I actually have multiple registration sheets that I'll switch in and out depending on the type of plate that I'm printing. And then the acetate is so great because it protects your registration sheet from getting dirty and it's also super easy to clean off the print, making it with a rag off of the acetate. Ready to print. I always feel nervous <laughs> before I print the first proof. You're gonna take your plate and you wanna line it up on the registration sheet. I usually put down one edge like this that matches the registration sheet and I very slowly lower it down. Inevitably though, it doesn't fall right on the registration lines. So you, I almost always have to go in with a pencil or a pen and this way you can move your plate 
without actually putting your fingers on it. Because anytime you have your hands on here, there's the risk of a fingerprint. And getting a fingerprint on my print just makes me want to cry. By the way, you should get a printmaking apron. You're going to feel like such a badass. It's like Dr. Strange's cape. Now I'm going to take off my gloves because I'm going to go wash my hands, get my wet paper, blot it with towels. All right, I'm going to put my printmaking paper down. I've got a sheet of newsprint, folded that in half. And you got to be careful here when you put the newsprint over the printmaking paper. Sometimes you're not looking and you'll put this down, actually move the printmaking paper. So what I usually do, just put one hand really gently on the paper. I'll put the printmaking paper on top, put this hand over, and then I'll take my other hand out from the bottom. And then I make sure I don't disturb it. Same thing, if you put down the printmaking blankets and you're not looking, this could easily get moved. So usually with the printmaking blankets, I'll put my hand here to hold the plate and the paper in place. I'll put this on top, stick this hand here, and then pull this one out. It's like a magic trick, except not really. <laughs> All right, oh, so excited. Okay, let's see. Actually, I might need to go, yeah, I think I need to go through a little bit more. Okay. Bring that up. Oh man, I totally overwiped it. Gotta clean the press bed before you do another plate. A little bit of baby oil like this. And that gets rid of all the ink. Also a wipe of denatured alcohol is a good idea just to degrease the surface because the baby oil is oily. 